Well, the interesting thing is at the moment that uh, to note that fees are falling. And um, yesterday I was in a seminar and I was talking about Melbourne, who have been probably the biggest instigator of falling commissions in this country. Uh, and I was saying that in Melbourne at the moment there are agents running around there saying they'll do it for 0.8. And there was a guy sitting in the front row of my seminar who said try 0.5. And I actually said to him, sorry, what are you talking about? And he said, there's agents in my patch in Melbourne talking 0.5, including the advertising. So what we're gonna do is stop not talking about this because this industry is losing uh, its, its uh, commission structure very, very fast. Sydney is going down very fast, literally as we speak. I think the average in Sydney's probably gone from 2.5, it's probably got a one in front of it, and that's all happened in the last 18 months. So it's interesting to ask the question, why is that happening? And I think there's a couple of three reasons. The first one is that um, I, I think that there is a lack of brand advertising in real estate. We don't do brand advertising. And in fact, the real estate industry is not good with brand. We think our logo is our brand. And so all the punter has to go by when I'm trying to choose an agent, the security that I want, is who is doing most of the business. The way I see that is in the number of pages in the paper. So it's the number of pages in the paper. You know, if you, if you think about it, if one company's got 10 pages, another company's only got two. Um, perception is, is not reality, and yet at one level it is, because who, is the big, who seems like the biggest agent? The one with 10. Uh, who seems like they've got more uh, salespeople? The one with 10 pages. May not be real but that's what it seems. Uh, who's got more chance of finding me a buyer? The one with 10. So what happens is the focus can very much become on selling advertising. And I think that's what's happened in Melbourne. The focus has been on is, is bringing, in, bringing in big checks for marketing, but the commission has dropped. And so that's one reason that I, that I think it's gone down. Uh, I think another is that we're not scrapping anymore over $5,000. Um, the average uh, sale in Sydney, the median sale now is, is nudging a million dollars. You're scrapping over the, you know, you're scrapping over 20 grand, of which in some cases agents are getting 12, 14,000 of that. Now that's half the salary of the young lady or the young person sitting in your front desk, the junior receptionist. That's half their salary, half their year's wages. That's what we're scrapping over. So if you're new to the industry, and there's a lot of people new to the industry because it works on supply and demand. If you're new to the industry and you're trying to get a foothold, and the, the deal is you can, get, you can miss out on 14,000, or you can offer and get it for eight, they'll take the eight. So we're scrapping over serious money now, $6 billion out there paid to agencies and uh, to agents. So I think that's another reason, you know, it's, we're not scrapping over, over small change. Uh, I think it may, um, it may slow down. Uh, I think you may see a slowdown if this bubble bursts and the market turns around. Uh, there's not so many listings now. If the market turns around, there'll be a glut of listings. That's what happens. The average time on the market goes out, so there is, there's thousands more listings come onto the market. 98% of this industry has no idea of pricing, no idea of how to correct prices. And so what happens is uh, there are a lot more what I call second wave listings where agents can pick up a listing second time round. You pick it up second time round, you can ask for more commission because you're gonna be the one that gets the job done. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting time. I mean, a 17 year old with a license in Sydney at the moment can make a couple hundred grand. That's the reality. Uh, so, you know, the payment structure is under fire. This is a massive subject and certainly one that we can't answer in a, in, a, in a two minute video, but Michael Porter from Harvard says there's three ways to get strategic advantage. And that's what you're talking about in the end, is what are the strategic advantages we have that will make you pay more for my services, yeah? And it goes all the way back to um, how you prospect. Uh, if you are paying attention to your database, if you're looking after your database, if you're having the right conversations with your database, then um, your call-in is a totally different call-in to knocking on a door and begging to see if you can sell their house and get some money. Yeah, it's a totally different 
a way of looking at it. So if you are prospecting correctly and a lot of your business is referral business and repeat business, your fees will be up automatically. Michael Porter says there's three ways to get strategic advantage. The first one is cost. You drop your fees, which a lot of people are doing and you're going to see more of. There's so much money at stake here. You're going to see one percenters, 0.5 percenters. They're here. They're not going away. It's not going to change. So first one is cost. You drop your fees. The second way of getting strategic advantage is differentiation, which is what is the difference between you and anybody else. Now, there's a saying that, that goes like this. It says, I will gladly pay more for a better service or product as long as you can show me why it's better. That goes for anything, not just uh, real estate. Now, so the deal becomes, we need to be very clear around why our company is better, why our franchise is better, why our company is better, and why I as an individual are better, and what I'm gonna do for you that will make you pay more, yeah? The third way, just for interest, Michael Porter says to get strategic advantages through specialization. There's a lot of specialists out there. You can specialist, specialize in an area, but in the end, it's gonna come back so if I'm sitting in front of you, what are you going to tell me is the reason I should list with you? And what is the reason I should pay more? What is that differentiation? That's what we've got to pay attention to. Really good exercise for managers is uh, to ring from a landline from home. Just ring some of your salespeople and just ask them, hey, I'm looking at selling my house. It's in your area. Why should I list with you and your company? and you will hear the biggest load of rubbish you've ever heard in your life. It'll be an embarrassment. So that's the place we start, is to get clear. That goes all the way back to brand. Why are we here in the first place? What are our core values? So it's a massive subject, but there's a lot we can do. So again, not with any one-liner, any magical silver bullet Americanism you know, a smart aleck line that's going to get someone to pay another five grand. You pay attention to the why us, you be very clear around that, which goes all the way back to your brand. Then I think we must understand that getting it across at the end, getting that, that commission up at the end, starts right back at the beginning. It starts at your first uh, contact with these people that you don't start selling. It starts with your first visit and how you handle that. And it's interesting to note at the moment that um, everything that we've been taught and I've been teaching for 25 years, the entire presentation based around marketing plans and calendars is all a load of hogwash now. It's just detail. It, it's 98% uh, of this industry is still presenting in a way that is 10 years too old now and it needs to change. We go out, we put all our gloss on the table. Um, every franchise is trying to out-gloss every other franchise, and we vomit all over it with these one-liners and expect people to say, yippee, I'm coming with you, and I'm paying you another $10,000. And it doesn't work like that, and it's not going to work like that. So we need to change that, yeah? And one of the things that I'm teaching now is about being present. And I had an a interesting case the other day where a $2 million earner missed a listing that I was coaching. And he missed it. And I said, did you ask them why they listed with somebody else? And he said, yes. The answer was fabulous in terms of an insight into how uh, people choose. They said, we listed with the other agent because he got us and he got our house. Now that just opens up a whole different philosophy on presentation and why people will pay for you. So what I'm teaching now is how to be present, how to be real in front of these people, to not be talking about your dopey calendars and your, you know, the fact that you can get them a bigger ad on realestate.com because everybody else is doing the same. But to sit and to, to be present with these people in a way that you do show you get them. And this is what I call soul to soul. This is about people moving home. That's, that's all this is about. It's people moving, moving their families from one city to another, moving to be closer to parents, to be closer to children, away from children, whatever it is. That's what this comes back to. And I think we've lost the plot a little bit around that. So that's why I'm teaching this new, whole new way of presenting.